Hello everyone. Uh, for today's video tutorial, I'm gonna start over a new sensor that is AD5252, and uh, for that uh, we have to log into the website that is controleverything.com, and here we have to search on for this sensor as you can see on my screen. And let's see what we got for this sensor. And here it is. It's a digital potentiometer. It's a hundred K as you can see hundred thousand. Now these are some more prominent features of this potentiometer and the plus point is that you can purchase the sensor from here. Now for the interfacing section we are going to take care of potentiometer AD5252 with our Raspberry Pi and a Java code is required and let's have a look over the resource tab and here comes the Java code sample. Now you can have the Java code sample as a zip file from here just like that and also you can have the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. Now let's have a look over the hardware we need for this setup and let's proceed. Well in the hardware setup uh, for the connections what do we require is this uh, Raspberry Pi which you are able to see on my screen and these are the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. Next we require an I2C shield which you can see and it's available on the website controleverything.com. The real reason we are using this shield is to make easier connections with other I2C devices. So for that gently place the I2C shield over the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. Next we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that we require a micro USB cable just like that and gently insert it over here the power jack. And for the internet connection there are two options. First of all this here is an ethernet cable or a LAN cable. Now gently insert it over this ethernet jack and you are done with the connections part. Now, for the other internet connection, we can also have a adapter, a wireless nano USB adapter, just like that. And you can have on the USB port. The next part is to bring our potentiometer that is AD5252. And here it is. And this here is a connecting cable. Now make the connection among the connecting cable and the sensor and make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor. And same rule has to be applied for the I2C shield. Now we are done with the connections part. The next part is to provide the code. So let's have it. Coming to the interfacing part, the first step is to log into github.com and then we have to search for the repository that is control everything community. And after that, this here is the sensor AD5252. This is the Java code. But before that, let's have a look over the instructions part. It says that we have to download and install Pi 4G library on the Raspberry Pi. And pi4g.com is the link from where we have our library installation process, everything clearly mentioned. Do it carefully, please. And after that, we have to download the code onto the Raspberry Pi. And this is the command for the compilation of code. And this is for the running part. Now, note it carefully. After that, get back to the Java code. As you see, it's a dot Java extension file. Now, in the code, as you notice, we have imported some of the libraries from the main library, that is the pi4g. And we have created a class name AD5252. Then we have bus.get device, which will check whether the device address is 0x2c or not. Now coming to the writing section part, we are going to send instruction for potentiometer channel 0 and it is 0x01 with input resistance value 0x80. And here comes the writing command. And then we have uh, going to send instruction for potential channel 1 which is 0x03 and input resistance value that is 0x80. The writing command is here. After that we are going to read one byte of the data from the register that is 0x01. We are reading it and after that uh, as you can see we are again reading uh, data from the registers 0x03 one byte of data and here comes the conversion of the variables resistance 1, resistance 2 and every formula which you see is clearly mentioned in the data sheet. At the very end of our code we have the output data to be displayed onto the screen which says resistance channel 0 and channel 1. So this is how a code is like. Now let's see how it works. Coming to the working part, first of all we need uh, to copy the entire code and after that we need to open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi and then we have to create a new file as you are able to see on my screen dot java will be the extension for this and then we have to paste the entire code and the last part is to save it now for the compilation process as you are able to see on my screen and here we go it's a dot java extension file the code is being compiled right now 
the compilation is good now to run the command the code is uh, his uh, the command is here the run the code and here we are we have the resistance for channel 0 and 1 it will be 5 kilo ohm and we are measuring the resistance across the channels 0 and 1 and the terminals W and E when I run again and the command the values are on to the screen and when I use a multimeter a digital multimeter using uh, the resistance among the WA channel uh, WA terminals for the channel 0 and 1 the same value is reflected onto the screen so this means the sensor is correctly showing the value which is reflected onto the digital multimeter and now the next part is to show the applications and some of the benefits the AD5252 is a dual channel I2C non-volatile memory digital control potentiometer with 256 positions this device performs the same electronic adjustment functions as mechanical potentiometers, trimmers and variable resistors. The part's versatile programmability allows multiple modes of operation including reading, writing access in the RD, AC and EE MEM resistors, increment, decrement of resistance, resistance changes in plus minus 6 dB scales, Viper setting readback and extra double E MEM for storing user defined information. Due to these features, it is really applicable for a lot of applications like mechanical potentiometer replacement, LCD panel VCOM adjustment, white LED brightness adjustment, RF base station power amp bias control, programmable voltage to current conversion, and a lot more to mention. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab from this site. You can download the code as a zip file. Also, you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sensor or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching.